Hello and welcome to Startup Champions 2.0, the show where you meet national startup award winning founders. In today's episode, you will meet two startup champions from the health and wellness industry. These are Beto App and Sascan. Diabetes impacts most organs in the human body, but the larger problem is not the disease. Instead, it's the procrastination that people keep doing. Because checking your blood sugar levels regularly, going to a doctor, getting your medicines on time is extremely tough. How do we change this? This is the question that our startup champions asked when they both got diagnosed with diabetes. And they created the Beto app. Let's now see the story of Beto app. We wanted to empower millions of people, not only in India, but across the world to be able to better manage and control their diabetes. Beto is a full-stride digital care ecosystem that cuts across different segments of people with diabetes and addresses their different needs. Today, Beto has more than one and a half million users. Out of them, about 500,000, which is almost half a million, are actually paid users. And these individuals are able to come into the Beto app by simply purchasing this very cost-effective connected IoT glucometer that we have. And as soon as they start monitoring, we're able to, of course, like I mentioned, provide you with nudging and contextual understanding. And then an individual is able to carry out all their necessary expenses. When a customer touches Beto in any way, form and manner, they don't really understand the intricacies of what the operations really look like. You know, from the website which is working and the website needs to be live, from the app which has to provide, you know, 99% performance and uptime, to the delivery of services and goods which needs to be done to the consumers in less than three days. Our promise to consumers is that we will deliver each one of these in a timely manner. So Gautam and Yash, welcome to Startup Champions 2.0. Before we begin, let's hear from Dr. Navneet from your team, who has been treating diabetes since the past 20 plus years now. Patient who has downloaded the app has the, the option of consulting to a diabetologist, to a endocrinologist, and then our coaches, our dietitians take care of his diet plans, his nutritional intake, so that they can provide him a balanced nutritional intake. Our platform is providing a 24 by 7 support for a patient sitting at his home just on an app. For our team, it's easier to consult a large number of patients when we are doing in on the virtual platform instead of the physical platform. As we have the entire history, their investigations, their reports with us so that we can formulate the treatment on the base of that and it, it cut shorts the time taken in the consultation. I want one of you to literally prove it to our audience today in the show that diabetes can be treated digitally. The stage is all yours. So all I'm going to do is switch on the Beto app. And once the Beto app is on, all I have to do is plug in this really small device. This device is without a display. It has no battery. It takes all its power and, you know, digital information comes directly from the app itself. Now that I've plugged the device into the phone, it will ask me to insert a strip. This has been designed by us. It's manufactured in India. Wow. We, in fact, just a couple of weeks ago, we received a patent for the for the so entire system. system. Yeah. Fantastic. Now the app itself is telling me the next step. You know, okay. so that if people get confused, they can easily follow instructions. It'll ask me to apply a you know drop of blood at the edge of the strip. Sure. Which is what I'm going to do next. So now that I've applied blood, uh -huh. it'll take 10 seconds for it to give me a result. Okay. And the result is instantaneous. And what the app also does is, it provides me additional information on what I need to do next based on the result that I've had. So, as you can see, I had a slightly heavy lunch and it is showing me that my post-lunch readings are high and it is also telling me that I have trends that I can look at, I can add notes if I want some additional notes to be added so that you know if I've had something which is, uh, you know, extra spicy or things like that, sure. something like that, then it will give me that information. So that's how we are and instantly what will happen is because my readings are high, sure. someone will reach out to me and give me the right guidance that I need. 95% of diabetics in our country are not able to uh, even access. Uh, you'll be surprised to know that only 5% of endocrinologists and medical experts actually are in tier 2 cities and beyond in India, oh. where 95% of people with diabetes actually reside. And this is exactly the bridge that we've been able to create because every time that Yash is reading is high or it's uh, moving in the wrong direction, right. our experts in the background are actually keeping a track of it and they reach out to him proactively, virtually, 
uh, and are able to address his concerns and be able to put him on the right path to be able to manage and control his condition better. That's phenomenal. So, so you're fundamentally saying that where 95% of the diabetic population at least stays, there are just 5% of the doctors? Absolutely. Yeah. And so I think the problem was that we were trying to address was accessibility at an affordable price point. So in India, we have a disproportionate number of good doctors sitting in Delhi, Bombay, Bangalore, mm -hmm. Calcutta and a disproportionate number of patients sitting all across the other cities and not only mm. in these metros. And if, if we have to solve for whole of India, right. we can do it digitally at a fraction of the cost that is available otherwise. So I think that was the larger intent that we wanted to build out. And being a patient ourselves, we consider Sorry. ourselves patients zero and one. Uh, the intent was if we can't solve for self, how will we solve for the larger Absolutely, audience? Absolutely, of course. And that's how the I journey began. That, yes. And I think one of the very critical aspects of you know using technology today to be able to solve for you know diabetes is the fact that there is enough clinical evidence also available sure. across the country sure. and you know with the work that we've been able to do where we've been published in top international journals we've been able to actually demonstrate the clinical efficacy and validate you know the whole ecosystem and the approach that we've had in being able to help people improve their condition. This is a doctor and medical experts sitting in our offices instantly being able to connect with Yash and to be able to help him out in this situation. The call is connecting and good afternoon Dr. Navneet. Yeah, good afternoon, good afternoon Mr. Yash. Sir, I, I, we just wanted to understand if you were able to see my reading uh, which had come high. The sugars are slightly higher, though you are taking these or three food medicine, but still the sugars are not controlled. So I am sure you must be knowing the targets that the fasting should be around less than 100 and postprandial should be less than 140. And the A1C is still not in the target. Sometimes you slip from the normal diet. So you can do it. But the thing is that we, we can also change slightly your medication because like you're, you're still not in the target. Thank you so much for all the help. As Dr. Navneet pointed out, Yash requires a, a change in medicine in many cases. Of course, in this case, it might be different. In many cases, actually, people reduce their medication, and that's when the doctors are, you know, uh, in the background, always reviewing the progress of the individual sure. so that the medicines can be optimized. Of course, the eventual goal is that most people can be, you know, off medication or otherwise at least reduce the quantum of the medication they're having by, you know, resorting to nutritional interventions, etc. Sure. And in Yash's case, because now he's altered his prescription, you will soon see a person coming in uh, and giving him his medication yeah. right now. There you go. Yes, See? your box Fantastic. of changed medicine. Fantastic. So everything happens in a jiffy, literally like that on stage. Uh, Yash actually got his medicines as well. And that is exactly how you would get your medicines too. Tell me something now. Uh, what's your business model? How do you guys make money? Right. So Paritosh, of course, you know, at the center of the universe is our app. Sure. Uh, and then there are four key pillars around it. The first one is when people are coming in through the self-monitoring management sure. through a connected device, of course, we charge something for the device sure. itself. However, you know, given any benchmarks, it's the, perhaps the most affordable device out there. Okay. Uh, and then as people, you know, step into the ecosystem, start to experience the engagement with our coaches, with our doctors, they come and enroll themselves into the into the care program, okay. which is where, you know, of course, you get access to the best of doctors, to the coaches, etc. And we charge a very, you know, nominal, uh, we have a very nominal charge charge for this. Sure. We charge on average just about a thousand rupees a month where otherwise you know even the medication doesn't come for thousand rupees sure. uh, in a month and here you have the doctor, the coach, your medicines as well as all your monitoring needs all encompassed into one solution solving for the person. We do touch upon digital marketing. Digital marketing had been a you know rite of passage when you uh, become sure. a direct to consumer company but what is very important for us is the word of mouth that consumers has created for Interesting. us. Interesting. I think the largest impact that we've been able to see is the the spectrum of people that whose lives we've, we've been able to change. A whole bunch of consumers who've been with us for over two years have seen an HbA1c reduction of 1.9% across this two year period. So we've not only reduced their blood sugar levels, but also been able to sustain it in a continuous manner. And a good customer gives you 10 more. So I'm I think sure. that's been the I'm secret sure. to success. And how did you fund your business on day one? I do appreciate that you've raised external money, but how did you fund your business on day one? So it was well funded from our savings. Yeah. Uh, you know. Uh, to begin with, of course, uh, we were still trying to understand, uh, you know, what we meant, what we were supposed to do to be able to solve for this problem. Sure. But uh, for the first year, year and a half, Yash and I self-funded the business. Wow, incredible. Look, uh, millions of Indians are watching you right now on this show. What's your message to them? I think uh, if I, for personally speaking, I think uh, what I really benefited from was trying to solve a real problem which resonated with myself. Mm. And that allowed me to persevere and uh, you know, be persistent in solving for this problem, which could impact uh, in the end millions of other folks around the world.
Fantastic. If I can just add to that, for me, what was really important when we started this journey was the fact that we were solving a personal need and a personal mm. pain point. And when we looked at the global scenario, there was no solution which was affordable and accessible. So we weren't scared or daunted by that task. Mm. I think we were fortunate that the environment also allowed for a, you know, the product is made in India. We one of the few devices made in India. We decided that we wanted to make in India a product which would serve India. Sure. So the reality of an Atmanirbhar Bharat ah. was something that we were able to achieve with our mission. So I think no. it was very fortunate that we built for India a product of global standards. Phenomenal. On that note, the top two lessons of this session for all of you are number one, solve a problem that you feel for by yourself. Number two, create an ecosystem of convenience around your customers. They will never, never, never leave you. And that's a proof of their success as well. It's time for a very, very short break, but don't go anywhere. On the other side, you will meet the next startup champion. They will show you how technology can make it affordable and easier to detect life-threatening diseases like cancer. So do not miss even a single second of this episode. I'll see you on the other side. Welcome back to Startup Champions 2.0. It's now time to meet our second startup champion, cancer. Just this one word is enough to create fear. Though there are numerous stories of cancer fighters and survivors, in most cases, cancer is detected at a much later stage. And by then, it becomes a lot more difficult to cure the malignancy. Imagine if detecting cancer at a much early stage was as easy as a scan and five minutes. This is exactly what our startup champion does. Let's now see the Saskan story. I strongly believe that whatever research you do, basic research you do, at the end of the day, it has to benefit the human man. So I thought if I can develop something that can benefit the population by having a device that can screen early stages of cancer and detect uh, the malignancy in the early stage, I can be able to create an impact in the society by bringing down the death rates due to cancer to lower levels. In oral scan, we have a, a cloud-based machine learning algorithm that will give the user the feedback in real time, what is the kind of malignancy as well as the spot from where to take an optimal biopsy. This product has got a huge social impact attached to that. Along with the research uh, enablers, the, the biggest enabler or the biggest part of this product is the social relevance and how much it touches the public or touches the masses. This device has a, is working on the principle of uh, multiple LED lights and it has a camera attached to it. This uh, camera takes pictures and it is uh, sent to a processing unit uh, where it is processed by using a machine learning algorithm. And uh, this also is uploaded into the cloud so that we can get the results. We can take the values uh, from anywhere in this world. Subhash, welcome to Startup Champions 2.0. Uh, let's start with our first question. So how did you fundamentally discover this entire problem? So oral cancer is a grave concern, not only in India, but the world over. Okay. In India, more than 90,000 cases of oral cancer are detected each year. Out of this, more than 50% of the people die each year due to the late stage of detection. Wow. Wow. So if we can have some device that can detect early, we can create an impact in the society for that matter. Interesting. So how is uh, the multispectral imaging technology that you've created, it is different from the current scanning technologies? No, currently in India, what clinicians as well as health workers use, they have a torchlight okay. to examine the abnormality in the oral cavity. They just shine the torchlight and look for abnormal lesions. Even experienced clinicians find it challenging to locate the most malignant site for biopsy or to detect even the early stage of cancer. Sometimes they fail. Mm -hmm. So it leads to multiple biopsies, patient discomfort and expensive treatment that follow. Interesting. And, so, and le let's just try and check um, as to how, how you do it. So, so why don't you sort of show our audience <laughs> your product and yeah. how is it different from just that uh, little light that um, the clinicians shine right <laughs> So what we have in our product, this is a multi-spectral imaging camera actually. Okay. So we have multiple LEDs are there which can illuminate the tissue with different wavelengths of light and there is a monochrome camera which is sitting inside okay uh, that will capture images of the oral cavity on excitation with different leds so this has a proprietary software which will be installed in the uh, in a computer uh, and that software will control the operation of the camera as well as the processing of the captured images in 
And the important aspect or the beauty of the product is that it can provide real-time feedback to the user. That is about whether the tissue is malignant or potentially malignant or the tissue is healthy. And there is a visual display mm -hmm. on the screen where it is categorized as green for healthy tissue and yellow for uh, potentially malignant tissue and red for malignant. So when a doctor does a screening actually, he or she can show the patient, hey, this is your status level. So unless you stop your habits or withdraw from it, you will have a dangerous situation in which you will have a malignancy cancer or level of high level of cancer and you need a lot of money to treat it. So better stop your habit. Sure. So the patient or the, the who is being screened, you know, he will be really, really scared to go for again to that tobacco habits or to the smoking habits. So this is fundamentally very, very feedback tool also. Not only that, yeah. once you do a screening, you can look at the abnorm from the abnormal area, you can look at the most malignant site in the lesion for a biopsy so that an accurate diagnosis is possible. You know that when a biopsy is taken, sure. if the site is not correct, you get a negative result. Correct. So if the site is the most malignant site, then you get a very good biopsy and that way you can have a very good treatment procedures for the patient. And let me ask you this question. So how accurate is your device uh, from the perspective of, as you said, the different colors and treating malignancy, right? Um, or detecting malignancy impact. So how yeah. accurate is your device? So uh, we have done a multi clinical trials to validate this device covering six hospitals across the country. Wow. And we have got a sensitivity and specificity of more than 90%. That compared to the gold standard, you know, we compare Phenomenal. our results with the gold standard. We got a very good accuracy like that. Phenomenal. So, so that is where we stand right now. Interesting. And and um, you know, what's your business model? So, how do you make money? So, our idea is to create an impact in the society. Sure. So, we have different models that cater to the different segments. You know, sure. who are potential users. So, for that matter, uh, we have a direct sales model in which we sell the device. Uh, at a particular price point okay. and we provide the, uh, the users with uh, uh, cloud support and free upgrades of software for two years time. Oh, okay. Yeah, And uh, then those who cannot afford to buy that mm. uh, device at the full price, so we have a pay-per-use model. Pay-per-use ah. in the sense, you know, they for can, scan. yeah, they, they have to uh, pay half the price of the product when Got you it. get into the scheme and the product is theirs for that matter and they can buy a screening pack actually which can uh, very uh, the paper use uh, fees from 20 to 500 rupees also maximum is 500 for small scan packages they buy Got it. and those who are NGOs who want to use it for a few weeks or sure. few months you sure. know we have a another program is a monthly lease rental model in which they don't buy the device mm -hmm. we provide them device on a security right. deposit and monthly fees are collected and, so, and and what's your sales and marketing strategy so <laughs> so do you do you reach out to doctors uh, yourself or how do you do it so uh, we do uh, uh, take out the media the website the publicity we Got get it. through the media and we have direct phone calls with the potential users our team is the marketing team is there they call them and get the feedback and mm -hmm. then provide the device for especially one important aspect of that you know this being an expensive device it costs around four lakhs rupees so sure. those who want to buy it you know they have to they would think this is a new device i don't know how it works actually sure. so i would like to have a trial of it so what we do is we give the users a free trial they can use it for one month no questions asked and they can experiment with it and then they find value in it they buy it so wow. our uh, 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 way of doing it is that we want to get into the premium institutions in the country. So for that matter, so like if you can get into institutions like the Kidwai or sure, the sure. Tata Memorial Hospitals and uh, the leading cancer hospital in the country, then getting customers is not a big problem at all. The word absolutely. of mouth will carry a lot of weight absolutely. for us here. Yeah. Absolutely. On that note, my last question to you, uh, sir, is um, look, lakhs of Indians are watching you right now. You, you fundamentally solved a problem with such a technology that that was not available for, right? Um, a person going through multiple biopsies, the kind of pain that a person sort of goes through, you've sort of just taken it all away, right? Uh, mm -hmm. What's your message to the lakhs of Indians who want to be entrepreneurs like you? So age is not a number, actually. So at any age, you can be an entrepreneur. Wow. So it is the passion that matters. If you're sure. passionate about something, you can achieve it. There will be problems on the way, but sure. if you put your head into it, you can solve it. And uh, everybody should, the elders or even the senior citizens, they have lots of experience. Sure. They have worked in a profession for such a long period. Right. They should come forward and take up the challenge. And this is a funny ride. You can do it. Fantastic. That's it. Yeah. 
So on that note, you can do it. That's the message. The top two lessons of this session are to solve large problems, you must know large problems that have deep impact. That's what he has done, his team has done. Um, and number two is you must use technology to disrupt existing solutions by leapfrogging experiences for your customers. That's exactly what the technology has done. Don't think small. 99% <laughs> of the world anyway is already doing it. Why are you doing it for yourself? It's now time for a very, very short break, but don't you go anywhere because up next will be your questions and answers by our startup champions. I will see you on the other side of this break. Welcome back to Startup Champions 2.0. Are you both ready for questions from our audience? Of course. Absolutely. Fantastic, great. Uh, so the first question has come in uh, for uh, our first startup champion. Please come on screen and ask your question. I am Aniket from Bihar. My question is to B2 team. How is your team structured and how do you manage entire operation? The journey has evolved uh, you know, over the last uh, four or five years at Beto. Uh, and we've grown from just the two of us now to perhaps uh, over 350 people. Wow. Uh, and I think uh, when you're when you're building a, a company from scratch, I think having a closely knit initial co sort of co-founding team sure. and core team is extremely important. Who share the vision of the founders to be able to drive, uh, you know, the eventual outcome for for making it a large enterprise. And uh, we've been very fortunate, not just the two of us, we've had you know, the extended core team, we have a third co-founder Kunal, we have a great core team who's actually carrying on uh, you know, this, uh, this mission to be able to impact millions of households in India uh, and improve their quality of life. Wow. Uh, I think when, 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 when an enterprise is getting built, naturally the KPIs will also evolve sure. over a period of time. Sure. And given we are a we are a services company, uh -huh. there are several things that have to come together at a at any point in time, right. uh, and uh, we take a special cognizance of that and ensure that you know the organization the way it is structured uh, has their KPIs and KRAs assigned very uh, very objectively to them, sure. so they understand what they have to do in very simple terms and are able to accomplish those objectives. The next question uh, I'm hoping would be for you. <laughs> Let's hear it from our audience. Uh, question number two. My name is Charu Sharma. I am from Haryana. My question to Sustain team, how many years did you take to create this product? So the product might look very simple. I have conducted more than 15 years of research into wow. developing this product. I am basically a scientist by profession. I was working on this uh, technology since 2005 onwards. So I got funding from the Department of Science and Technology initially to start the work and then we were doing it on uh, point monitoring systems on the patients. I've collaborated with the major cancer hospital in the country, the Regional Cancer Center in Trivandrum. I worked with them, I had PhD students, I was mentoring them and we had a lot of publications and patents and then finally uh, when I came out of the institute, I applied for this uh, Bayrak grant, you know, mm -hmm. the big scheme, and I got funded, and we made the prototype. It was not what was done before, but sure. it was a miniaturized version of what was done. We had sure. a bigger camera systems and all initially to okay. screen for cancers, and it took a lot of time to get into this, you know, actually. But 15 years. Yeah, 15 years, of course. And the company, you know, uh, started in 2015, and we got the product into the market only in 2021. So, so much of research has Almost gone into it years. in the company itself. We had sure. to raise funding, we had to do so many things to uh, take the product to this Got level it. and make it a viable one. Got it. So, it takes a lot of patience to actually build a great product and solve a large problem. Learning leads to earning. You all know this. Let's continue our journey of learning with step number eight of how to start a startup. Uh, two important things. Prepare for first launch. That's step number eight. You've learned so much more, but now it's time to prepare for your first ever launch. The two steps to a great launch are, number one, launch with minimal cost. You know, which is what the both of our startup champions actually have done today. You know, you launched with a very minimal cost. You launched with a very minimal, co minimal cost as well. Number two is build a community of users and promoters. If you really learn from Beto, you know, what they've done is they've built a community of promoters as one of the co-founders said that it is the customers who are actually referring more customers to us. So remember, step number eight of how to start a startup. If you implement this in your business, your startup will be part of that 1% that actually remains and becomes successful and not the rest of the 99% that go down in the very first year of operations. It's time now to say goodbye. Share your feedback with us. Uh, make your videos and post them on social media with hashtag Startup Champions too, and send them on the email given below. In the next episode, you will meet startup champions from the agriculture industry, one of the largest in India. Thank you for watching Startup Champions 2.0.
जय हिंद ऑल द इन्फॉर्मेशन फ्लोज फ्रॉम वन एंड टू दी अदर एंड फ्रॉम माई टेक्नोलॉजी स्टार्ट वी बिलीव दैट वी नीड टू क्रिएट चैम्पियंस Uh, stakeholders, if they see value sure. in what you are delivering, sure. whether it's through quality, whether it's through transparency, or whether it's just by assurance. Sure. Currently, the kind of uh, you know irrigation that farmers use are only two or three kinds. Sure. One is flood irrigation, which is only forty percent efficient. Sure.